Okay. So we're in the, we're in some of the most exciting parshas in the Torah. Vaera last week and Bo this week, where we talk about the plagues and the preparation for the exodus from Egypt, which happened like this. When it was time, it happened right away. It happened quickly. Sometimes we things can take forever, but then when it's the right time, it just all happens. So that's what happens in this week's parsha. Mm-hmm. Um, we are still in the middle of the plagues, and we were talking last week, and we were studying out of. Um, I sent the link out by email to put it up again on the chat box if anybody would like. Um, Norga, would you like me to put the link in the chat box, or you've got it? Yeah, I don't know how to do the. I'll get it for you. Okay. So, um, so we we were in the middle of talking about the um the various plagues and why why is it that Hashem made the plagues last for as long as they did, and a whole three weeks in between of warnings and back and forth and between Pharaoh and Moses, where the Egyptians and the Jewish people were kind of just onlookers and listening and watching what was happening, wouldn't it have made sense if Hashem was trying to um you know trying to show his his might and his greatness. He could have done it all very quickly. And indeed, we find actually in this week's Parsha, um, this is an interesting point that we didn't mention last week, is what happened was each plague, so Pharaoh calls Moses as it was, when it got overwhelming after six or seven days, Pharaoh calls Moses in and he says, please stop the plague, pray to God and stop the plague. Moses says, I'll pray, to, I'll stop the plague tomorrow or um, I'll go and pray now, whatever, whatever it is. Then he said, on condition, you'll let the Jewish people go. Then as soon as the plague finishes, um, Pharaoh calls Moses back, or Moses goes back to Moses to Pharaoh, or Pharaoh calls him back, and he says, you're not allowed to leave, to leave Egypt. Or you could just go for three days, or you could just go just just the just the just the the man, just the man, not the not the not not everybody else, or just or just the people without 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 the animals. There are all sorts of different um things that Pharaoh responds, but the point is he's not allowing, he's going back on his previous um promise that he's going to let the people, the Jewish people leave Egypt. That goes on for three weeks. And at the end of those three weeks, Moses says, there's a plague coming. You better let them go. And Pharaoh doesn't give in. And then the plague happens. So the warning for the actual plague happens quite a long, quite a bit of time after the last plague ended. Oh. In the case of, um, or, or, or it happens for a while in between. But the point, the point is that it happens um it doesn't happen simultaneously um, when um, when Moses is um, is is um, when Moses is first speaking to Pharaoh. In this week's parsha, I believe it is after the after the plague of darkness of Choshech. So Pharaoh, so Moses says, Pharaoh says to Moses, "Get out of here, and I don't want to see you ever again." And Moses says, "You won't see me ever again." Now, here's the, the problem is that he hasn't yet warned him about the next plague. Right. And every, every plague has to come with a warning, right? That even though Pharaoh's choice has been taken away from him by this point, at this point, after plague number five, Pharaoh had no longer free choice. But still, there was, there was, there was, Moses was demonstrating something by warning Pharaoh and Pharaoh not listening and the, and the, and the uh, magician, the, um, the Khartoumim, the, um, the, 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 the magicians, whatever they have, we translate it, um, um, pro- protesting or whatever it was. And there was this back and forth. But here, Moses hadn't yet warned Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's telling him, get out of here, don't come back ever again. And Moses said, I won't come back ever again. So he right actually, away, what he actually says is, as you said, like he's saying, yeah, as you, said, I won't see as again. you said, I won't see your face again. I won't see your face again. Yes. Now, the interesting thing is over here, God tells Moses, usually Moses would warn Pharaoh of the water or he would go to him or it would, it would, it would, Moses, there would be this conversation with Hashem to Moses in between. In this case, Moses warns Pharaoh right away about the death of the firstborns. Mm-hmm. Doesn't wait, I believe. And that's at least, that's um, as far as I remember. He doesn't wait for, um, to go out and to come back and all of that. Even though usually God only appeared to Moses outside of Egypt, outside of the city. Moses would only go out. He said, "When I go out of the city, because the city was full of, of, of full of, of of idols, full of um, full of um, things which were which were against Hashem." So Moses, so God wouldn't appear. Wouldn't, it was like an impure. It was a contaminated place. So God wouldn't appear to Moses inside of the city of inside of inside of wherever of the city where Pharaoh was. Mm-hmm. In this case, God appears to Moses. With it. Moses gets this um, this divine message to pass on to Pharaoh from God inside of Pharaoh's palace. And he says right away, 
that they're about the death of the firstborns. Is that right? I don't know. Right? I'm looking to see. Where does he tell them? Let's look. Um, I see that he says it on uh, verse 4 on chapter 11. He says, he says that this is going to happen, but I don't know where he is. Chapter 11, verse 4. Um, Uh, actually, Rashi says it. Rashi says it. It's not, it's not in. It's not in the verse. It's Rashi says it. The reason Rashi explains the reasoning. He says, "Why? How do we know? He, how do we know that this was the case? Because otherwise, Moses would have seen Pharaoh again, oh, right? Right, if right. Moses said, "I'm not going to see you again." And Pharaoh said, that, "Then, Mo, then Moses had to. Um, this had to happen right there and then. If it would have happened later with the, with this, an interruption in between, then it would be that it wouldn't be that Moses would would not be keeping to his word." Pharaoh wouldn't be keeping to his word, and God wouldn't be respecting Moses' word of what he had said, that he's not going to um, come back to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. So from that, we know that the warning happened there and then in the palace. What's the, why am I saying all this? To bring out, to get back to our discussion from last week and to back to the text, that Moses, that it could be, if it wasn't that all, that all the plagues happened with three weeks and one week. They did, all of them did, besides the last one. Hashem demonstrated in the last plague that all you need is a very short amount of time. Moses could warn Pharaoh right, right there and then, right after the last plague. It doesn't have to be a long time in between. Okay. And, and, the plague itself, and the plague itself also happened in a split second. The, the death happened at midnight. So the this plague itself happened, was extremely short. And the warning of the plague wasn't a long winded back and forth of three weeks. Right, right. He just tells him this is going to happen and there it is. I just wasn't able to get into that link. So I'm just going to listen to you. You weren't able to get into it. The thing that you sent, I clicked on it a few times, but I don't know, okay. nothing's happened. It's okay. So what comes out, okay. So what comes out from this is, so what we see is, um, back before that, if what if Hashem wanted, um, he could show, um, he could show um, the, the Egyptians and the Jewish people very quickly and very easily that, the, that he's able to bring plagues. And instead it took three weeks and a week in between. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, one week and, a th and three weeks in, in, in between. And we explain that the reason is because each plague has its own unique um, goal. The plagues are trying to teach, are trying to show the Jewish people something to, and to show the Egyptians something and to have some kind of impact, even though it wasn't having the full impact of, of forcing Pharaoh to let the people go. That only happened after the death of the firstborns. But there was something happening each time. There was a step towards that breakthrough, which was happening. What were those steps? So we we spoke last week about the first three plagues, I believe. We spoke about blood. We said that the, that the purpose of blood blood was number one to um, number one to um, to show that the deity of the Egyptians is false, mm -hmm. and proof being that. It, that that instead of it, the water coming and blessing them and giving them all the all the all that they needed, the, the water in Egypt, by the way, used to come up. It used to rise towards them um, miraculously. It's from when Jacob came to Fet to Egypt, this the water used to rise towards them, and they used to have enough. They always had enough water in, in Egypt because the because the Nile would rise and it would it would feed into all of the canals that came off the Nile, and they would all have enough water that they needed. So the Egyptians believed after this happening for 210 years that this was their God. Water was their God. Yeah. Here, um, only Pharaoh said, I created the Nile. I'm the God. Because <laughs> the Nile is the highest thing you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Here, Hashem was demonstrating that your deity, your God is false. It's turning into blood. Mm -hmm. and, this, and secondly, another point is the Jewish people were treated, were, were treated terribly by the Egyptians. And and um, and here Hashem was demonstrating that they, they were showing that actually the Egyptians are going that helping the Jewish people's pride. The Egyptians are going to have to turn towards the Jews to get their to get their water. If the Egyptians want water, they're going to have to pay an exorb exorbitant amount of money to the Egyptians to get their water. So instead of the Jews be, Jew being the slave in the Egyptians' house, now the Egyptian becomes a becomes a um, needy for the Jew. 
Um, and, they, and it happened, and this is all in the Midrash, and Rashi actually, it seems to be different, but in the Midrash, it seems to be, it says that they would both be drinking out of the same, um, the same, the, the, there, was a, there, was a, there was a bucket of water, they would both draw water from the bucket, the Egyptian would draw blood, and the Jew would draw water. If they would both take out one bucket, they would share a bucket, so the Egypt wanted to, or one jug, the, Egypt, the Egyptian wanted to, to drink out of the same jug as the Jew, so the Egyptian would drink from it, and the Jew would drink from it, and the Egyptian would drink blood, and the Jew would drink water. So there was no way to get around it. At one point, the Egyptian would say, put the water in my hands, and then it would turn into blood in their hands. So they had to pay for it. So here God was showing, so this was another thing about blood. And we spoke about frogs. We said that frogs is even more so. Frogs, not only is the deity false, but your deity is actually the one that's creating your, your punishment. The frogs are going to come out of the water. Mm-hmm. So that, that takes it a step further. The water produces the frogs. The Nile, your deity, produces your, your punishment. Mm-hmm. The third plague was lice. Lice, we said this was the first time where the magicians, the Khartoumim, said this is the finger of God. They were unable to produce lice. They were able to produce, to turn the water into blood. They were able to turn the stick into the snake. They were able to um, make frogs come out of the water, but they weren't able to, um, they weren't able to create lice. And they said, this is the finger of God. This is Hashem. So the, so each plague had its specific thing. And I don't remember, did we talk last week about hail? Did we get to the hail part yet or not yet? I don't think so. I, I think that's where we stopped. That's where we stopped. Okay. So let's take a look at the hail. And I think we might have said it quickly, but let's do it again. It is on... Um, it's source number seven. So it's it's on page number ten. So it's number seven. I'm still trying to get into that thing, but it's uh, chapter nine, verse eighteen to twenty. Oh, I no, think... no, you have a course, so you can. It's uh, it's yeah. I think I That's just. That... Found... What page are you at? Page ten. Okay, I think I have it. Debbie, would you like to read it for us? Yes. Go ahead. God said, at this time tomorrow, I'm going to rain down a very heavy hail, the likes of which has never been seen in Egypt from the day of its founding until now. Go now and gather in your livestock and all that you have in the field because any man or beast that is found in the field and not brought into the house will be struck by the hail and they will die. He of Pharaoh's servants who feared the word of the Lord drove his servants and his livestock into the houses. Makes sense. It's funny, only the ones that feared God. So the other ones didn't. The other stupid ones who after after ten plague after seven plagues they still had eight plagues they hadn't learned a lesson they still had to bring their animals inside it's, it's it's absurd when you think about it how they what they went through and how they weren't the stubbornness the stubbornness of the Egyptians not to give in it it's it's it's, it's really something something special. Well, people haven't changed that much. People are still the same now. It's true. That's true. Let's let's go on to the next page on page eleven. So this is what's the specific purpose of the of the of the of the hail? Robin, you want to read for us? Are you skipping the Arbe? Yes. No, okay. we're up to we're, we're, we're going to go on to Arbe in a second. We're, we're we're reading the piece before the Arbe. Wait. So which one am I reading? The Rebbe. Not the Rebbe. Oh, I'm reading the Rebbe. Okay. okay. Even before the plague of hail. Hang on. Everything that I teach is for the Rebbe. I don't have anything. I don't have other sources. All okay. for the Rebbe. Okay. okay. Even before the plague, <laughs> Rabbi brings all the sources. Yeah, yeah. Even before the plague of hail, there were some Egyptians who were God fearing, but this didn't have any practical expression. The plague of hail motivated the God fearing Egyptians to express their belief in a practical action, rushing to shelter their livestock. Yes, yeah, so here they actually had to do something. It wasn't enough. To wait and listen and to believe and not to believe, they had to de- they had to show it with they they had to demonstrate that they were God fearing. Are you a God fearing Egyptian or you're not a God fearing Egyptian? 
Right. And, no and they were given a choice. Not everybody had to suffer this time. Yeah, exactly. And the, these are the ones, these are the guys that kept their horses inside, are the ones that then chased the Jews to the water with their horses. Right. So they were God fearing on. <laughs> They were fearing enough that they didn't want their horses to die, but they weren't actually God fearing in a way that they, so it's like in Hasidus, we have an idea of the thief that prays before he goes to break into the house and asks God, please make sure that I am successful in my, in my, in my work. Please make sure that I'm successful. I don't get caught. That's the, that's the God fearing Egyptian. Right. Well, you know, they feared, they feared their own God. lives. And not, yeah. They feared Pharaoh. People get smarter very, people get smarter very slowly. <laughs> To this day. Oh, yeah. If you've been reading any of the interviews with people in Iowa and New Hampshire, you know that uh, people yeah, are still see, so stupid. Getting smart is a long learning curve. We don't, I don't know if we ever get smart. I think it's more about, I mean, at least for me, the way it's more about when do we, when do we um, realize that our minds are not as smart as we think they are? Yeah. When do we when do we let go and stop stop our arrogance and stop believing that we we know everything and we can figure everything out and let let them realize that some things are out of our control, some yeah. things are in Hashem's hands, or in, or Hashem put things in other people's hands. Right. Exactly. But, yeah. yeah. Let's go on to text number source number eight. Shiva, you want to read it for us? Moses hey. and Aaron came to Pharaoh and said to him. If you refuse to let the Israelites go, tomorrow I'm going to bring locusts into your land. They will obscure the view of the earth and no one will be able to see the earth. They will eat the surviving remnant left over by the hail and they will consume all your trees that grow out of the field. He turned and left Pharaoh. Pharaoh's servant said to him, how long will this one be a stumbling block to us? Let the people go and they will worship their God. Don't you understand yet that Egypt is lost? Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to him, go worship the Lord your God. Who will be going? Moses said, we will go with our youth and our elders, our sons and our daughters, our flocks and our cattle, because it is a festival of the Lord for us. Pharaoh told them not so. Let the men go now and worship the Lord. Yeah, so what's different over here? What do we see different by this plague? that 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 didn't happen that hasn't happened until now that's what we're looking for by each one of these what's well, we, different we see that the slaves pharaoh's slaves are already like okay come on let him or servants i guess in english it's servants in hebrew it's slaves they say to him for how long it's are you very getting... appropriate for mlk day but very appropriate for the mlk day uh, yeah so they're saying for how long are you is this one going to be a stumbling block just let them go, buddy. Don't you? Yes. See I, that I, it, hasn't that happened yet? Hasn't that happened yet? I'm pretty sure it has. I believe that the, that they've they've already they've already said things to Pharaoh um, earlier. Oh, um, is that not the case? I don't remember. It might. You might be right. But there's another there's another thing over here, and that is that Pharaoh actually. Pharaoh what is actually, it? What does it mean? The last sentence. Pharaoh told them. Not so. Let the men go now and worship the Lord. Is that a is Pharaoh saying okay? So some of the people can yeah, go. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's, he's, saying, saying, go. he's saying that the men can go. Yeah. The, so what's happening over here is that Pharaoh. I'll, I'll just. I, we, I don't have to, we don't have to read it out, out loud. But what the Rebbe is basically saying is. In the next piece, on page, on page, um, is it twelve? I'm not. On page twelve, yeah. That that fe that in this case there was some kind of of um, regret or um, was kind of an effect on Pharaoh that he did do some kind of he did go back on his word. He was he had said nobody's gonna go, and then the the um, the, the, um, the Khartoumim came and complained and he said, look, we're gonna lose. Egypt's getting lost. What are you stupid? So he called them back and he said. Some of them, not all of them, some of them, whatever it is. But the point is that here, Pharaoh himself changed his mind somewhat. He didn't allow the Jewish people to go completely. He wouldn't let them go out. He wouldn't let them free. But he agreed to let them go for a three-day festival in the, in the desert and just the men. Right. But but in Hebrew, it's Hagvarim, 
and the translation is man. And yes. I always thought Gever was a young man. No, Gever is a man. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So then let's go on to um, the middle, middle of page 12. Yeah, so learning takes time. So this provides us with a simple explanation for why the plagues needed to come separately with a pause in between each one. Stretching them out allowed the Egyptians time to consider the effect of the plague and draw conclusions from it. Had each plague occurred quickly and without a pause between the plagues, the Egyptians wouldn't have had, had any, enough time to contemplate the meaning of the plagues and thus the plagues wouldn't have had the desired effect. So here we have the main thing from all these learning, all these uh, things that we learn in the Torah is what is the what is the message for us? What can we learn from this? Besides that, learning takes time, and as we already established, what is the message that we could all learn from these from the fact that the, that the plagues went on for eleven months or ten months, um, in order to teach the, the Egyptians something? So, um, who are we up to? Um, Noga, you got it. But. You on it? Are you on the text in the end? Yeah, 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 I am. As what do you wanna what you wanna read for us on page on page um on page thirteen or summarize the Hebrew for us, whatever's easier for you? Uh he's just it saying might, it might be a little hard to summarize the Hebrew over here because there's some words um some you can read it words. in English. Tell you what, you can read it in English and if we have another part from the Bible, I'll read a little bit, but okay. it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry that we missed you on that on those pages. Uh, that, the, that, that go ahead. Read, read the rabbit's words on page on page thirteen. Yeah. Yeah, my reading, my English reading is at page thirteen. I thought yeah. we were on page twelve. We moved on to page thirteen. But the winning effect of time. The what? The title of the page is the winning effect of time. Uh, the winning effect of. בעניין זה יש הוראה ולימוד בעבודת אדוני, כאשר עוסקים בהפצת התורה והיהדות, והפצת מעיינות קוצה, קורה לפעמים שמרגישים שלמרות שדיברו עם יהודי פלוני וניסו להשפיע עליו וכו', לא הצליחו לפעול ולא כלום. So the English is, there is a lesson we can derive from here regarding our divine service. When we are working to spread Judaism and further the teaching of Hasidut, we can sometimes feel that our attempts to influence a fellow Jew were unsuccessful. Our analysis of the schedule of the plagues and their impact on Pharaoh teaches us a lesson in this regard. Pharaoh was stricken you with read the Hebrew. No, guys, it was nice to hear you reading the Hebrew before. <laughs> Hananet, Hananet, yeah, go on. But nobody understands. <laughs> I understand. Sure understands. I understand. Probably understand. I understand a little. He knows. <laughs> הן אמת שגם לאחר שפרעה קיבל כמה וכמה מכות, לא ראו אצלו הזזה כלשהי, שהרי בנוגע לפועל לא, קיים, לא קיים פרעה את ציווי הקדוש ברוך הוא, שלח את עמי ויעבדוני, והמשיך לטעון, לי יאורי ואני עשיתיני, ואני, אה, ואני עשיתיני, כבתחילה. אף אבל אף על פי כן, על ידי כל מכה ומכה, נפעלה אצלו פעולה מסוימת כנזכר להעיל. ואם הדברים אמורים בנוגע לפרעה מלך מצרים... Translate, 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 yeah? פרעה? אוקיי. Why don't you read the English? The English, reading the English is a little bit stretching for me. I mean, I I'll just, I'll just, I'll just summarize what you just said, that, that, that it's true that Pharaoh didn't give in, and that even after all, so many plagues, he still... He didn't change his his stance of not letting the Jewish people go, but mm -hmm. and he continued to claim that he was the God or whatever else. He yeah. made denial, but still we see that there was a specific effect and impact of each plague. Yeah, right. ואם הדברים אמורים בנוגע לפרעה מלך מצרים, ולפני מתן תורה, כאשר הייתה הגזרה עליונים לא ירדו למטה ותחתונים לא יעלו למעלה. 
הרי בנוגע ליהודי, ובפרט לאחר מתן תורה, לאחר ביטול הגזרה, בוודאי ובוודאי שכל פעולה ופעולה בקשר לענייני תורה ויהדות אינה חוזרת ריקם חס וחלילה, אלא פועלת פעולתה באופן, לא, פועלת פעולתה בנוגע לפועל ממש. Yeah, so this is so, so I have to give a bit of a background for this, par- for this translation, for this paragraph, but it says that, that by, there's a midrash that says that before the Torah was given, it's as if there was two nations, mm-hmm. it calls it Rome and Syria, that was I guess the two nations, uh, the, the two na- uh, Rome and Assyria, that were the two nations then, mm-hmm. and um, Surya, I guess is Assyria, no that's Ashur, Assyria, not, not Assyria, Syria. Um, and the two nations, it's like they made a decree that we're, that the Romans don't go to the, to the Syrians and the Syrians don't go to the Romans. We each stay in our own place. Mm-hmm. This is like, this is before the Torah was given. God mm-hmm. is in the heavens. We say, Hashamayim, Shamayim la Hashem. The heavens belong to Hashem. Mm-hmm. He gave the land to the people. Mm-hmm. The people don't go up and, the, and God doesn't come down. So to speak, God stays up in the heavens. We stay down here. What, what's the, the practical difference is that the physical, the material that we use doesn't actually, cannot be transformed into a godly object. For example, if we have a mezuzah on our door, which is written, by, written with, with God's name and it's written properly by a scribe with ink and a parchment and everything else, it's a kosher mezuzah, we are not able to throw it in the garbage. We have to bury it. It's, it's holy. It's, it's like, it's like the, it's even, or even the burial of, of people. Uh, the, the divine body which became a vet was a vessel to a divine soul so mm-hmm. the physical world the material world becomes transformed to be something holy mm-hmm. we have in our house a big pile of shemot of papers that we can't throw out sherry hates it because we don't have usually you go to the, to the main synagogue you bring all your all your papers and they take care of the burial but here we don't have a place to bring it to so we have big piles of papers in the house we have to once a, few, a couple times a year when i do a funeral i bring them with me to the mm-hmm. to the um, to the cemetery yeah so because because physical things can be transformed into something holy mm-hmm. that's what happened when the torah was given before the torah was given that wasn't possible before the torah was given god doesn't come down that the material stays material god stays up there when right. the torah was given moses goes up to the to, the, to hashem and hashem comes down the year that hashem and god came down to the mount Sinai. Mm-hmm. so what's the other point over here that if we're talking about pharaoh who was a wicked Person, and this was before the Torah was given. This is before the, this decree of heavens are for God and the, the earth is for people was was a not was was nullified. So it was actually he was actually down. He was with, in the material world, and he was a wicked person. And the, the material world had nothing to do with spirituality. How much more so for us who are not wicked people, and, we're, and we have God these souls. We're Jewish. Hashem gave us a special soul, and we're, after the Torah was given. We have this. We have the. Uh, we have the ability to that when we and that when we when we help another person, another another Jew, and we teach them something, we give them another, we 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 try to inspire them somehow. That it will eventually have that for sure. It's having some kind of impact. Mm-hmm. For sure, it's gonna. For sure, it's gonna have it. It's gonna. It's gonna affect them because it's not possible that we just that the words that we're saying are just being wasted. Everything that happens is for a purpose, and Hashem gave us this um, instruction to. Teach them and to talk to them and to help others. Yeah, Ubu Pashtut, simply. Mm-hmm. You want to read the next, the next, uh, la- la- next paragraph? Yeah, hey, I don't know if somebody else wants to read. Oh yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, Shira, you want to read for us the, next, the last two paragraphs? I'm enjoying no Nova's reading. <laughs> okay. There you go. You're nominated. <laughs> so we at we are now at Ubu Pashtut. Ubu Pashtut. In English, it would be the simply put. ובפשטות, כאשר מדברים עם יהודי בדברים היוצאים מן הלב, אודות ענייני יהדות, תורה ומצוותיה, ענייני מוסר ויראת שמיים, בדרכי נועם ובדרכי שלום, כמובן לא ייתכן שהדברים האלו, שאינם דברי עצמו כי אם דברי תורה, לא יפעלו את פעולתם. ובמילא, גם אם אינו רואה את הפעולה תכף ומיד, אומרים לו, אל תבט אל מראהו, שכן בוודאי ובוודאי נפעלה אצלו איזו פעולה, אלא שבזה עצמו ישנם כמה אופנים, כולל שלפעמים יש צורך בשהות הזמן להתבונן וכו', עד שהדבר יבוא לידי פועל בגילוי ממש. ומה שטוען שאינו רואה את הפעולה, אומרים לו, הסיבה לכך שאינך רואה היא 
מכיוון שמסתכל אתה בעניין, בעיני בשר, תתעלה קמעה, ואז תראה את פנימיותו של היהודי, ותיווכח שנפעלה אצלו פעולה, ותוסיף לפעול יותר ויותר, עד שסוף כל סוף רואים את הפעולה באופן גלוי. It's really beautiful, by the way. I don't know if you, how much you understand the Hebrew, but I think it's really beautiful. Tell us, tell us, you want to summarize for us? Well, it's just the way he, I don't know if it was written in English or in Hebrew originally. I don't know what was the original, but the Hebrew was just, it was just written very beautifully. It just basically he says that the, sim, it's that when you speak to a Jew with things that, with, and I think it's not just Jewish people, but in general, When you speak from the heart uh, about uh, about the Torah, mitzvot, yahadut, all these, uh, I don't know how to say mitzvot in, he, in English. Uh, if you speak about all these higher things, things that are about irat shamayim, about the fear of the heavens, if you speak about this in, uh, in a nice way, bedarkei noam bedarkei shalom, how do you say this in English? Um, and um, how's it translated over there? Yeah. Yeah, peaceful. And yeah, then of course, and then he says, it's not really your words. It's really from the Torah. It's the great Torah. It's things from the world. They It will work because it's going to do its work. And even if you don't see the the effect immediately, You'll, you'll say, don't look at it, what it looks like, because something is going to happen. Some kind of peula, some kind of movement is going to happen internally. And sometimes it might take time to, until you see these things, until it really comes out. And if somebody says that nothing happened, they say to him, it's because you're looking at it with, with eyes of, of, uh, of flesh. In English, you say physical eyes, but really it says... In, the, in our our flesh eyes of flesh right but if you go up a little if you raise yourself then you'll see the internal part of the Jewish person and then you'll see that something did happen that there was some kind of uh, effect that happened and then you'll want to do more and more because then you'll eventually you'll see it in a you'll you'll be able to uh, it will be more apparent. So anyway, I just think it's it's written beautifully. Did he write it in English or in Hebrew? Oh, so he said it. The rabbi said it. This, this, this is a Fabreng and a, a, a gathering on Shabbat, actually, on the Rosh Chodesh Shvat um, in, in 1986. Uh -huh. And he said it in Yiddish, actually. Uh -huh. And probably some of the words were these words. And then they and then it was transcribed. There would be people. There would be what called chazrim, which would remember people that would they we don't write on Shabbat to record, so they would remember oh, the right, whole right. three four hours that the Rebbe was speaking, word for word almost. Mm -hmm. And then they would transcribe it in Yiddish or in, and there was two. There was one in Yiddish and one in Hebrew. This is the uh -huh. Hebrew one. Yeah. Um, and they're still they're actually because the because there was many years previously that were only written up in Yiddish. They're being translated now into Hebrew by the same guy that who wrote this in Hebrew then. So they still have the office open, and they're working now through all the rest of the Rebbe's talks from 1950 all the way through until they're up to like 1975 right now, mm -hmm. and then then 1982 is when they began doing it. So they have another few years to go until they finish all of the Rebbe's talks in Hebrew. Um, yeah, it's, it's written very beautifully, and you know it's kind of interesting for me. I'm seeing especially this last section here that sometimes when I'm doing therapy with people it feels like this too that it takes a long time until things until people can uh, slowly see things in a different way and at the beginning you don't really see a change right but after a while st things start to happen and also that uh, a lot of people that aren't Jewish they still have God in them so you can talk about these things and right. So this is this is relevant to all people. This is, I mean, this is we're talking. This is how the Rebbe was talking to to Jews at a fabric, you know. But this is really the re relevant message to. It's 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 just a real, you know. When we say when we're talking from the heart and we're saying real things, which are, you know, what Hashem has given us and and with the Torah especially. I mean, even when it comes to to things which are not Jewish, we can teach Torah. We can teach Torah through our behaviors, through all sorts of things. I'm sure as a therapist, there are many things that you incorporate. You know. In 
from a deeper place, which are which are your internal ideas, which are from the Torah. Right. <laughs> the same. So when we're when we are um, when we are sharing those things, we should never think that we're that um, you know we're not having an effect. Sometimes we don't see it right away, and we have to look. We have to stop judging from the outside and look deeper. Yeah. Um, it's a very important message. I think for I see it also as a parent. Um, you know, with with my kids, sometimes you know you have to say things again and again and again. And you have to show that you that you know you have to um you have to show that it's really who you are and what you believe in, and eventually things start to have an impact and start to have an effect. So if we want to ha- inspire our children to be more Jewish, to be more connected to their heritage, and sometimes we say things and we tell them, ask them to go to to go here and go there, and we you know we shouldn't, and they they don't listen to us and they just leave us alone. We shouldn't, we shouldn't give up hope. Keep on trying. Obviously, bedarche noam, bedarche shalom. Right. Lots of love, mm-hmm. but uh, never give up hope. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you think the something? language here is really beautiful. I just that's what I was trying to say. I really like the the contrast between looking with physical eyes and seeing the inner dimension. That's really really beautiful because mm-hmm. we can be so put off by what that like apparently there's nothing going on but right. actually there's something going on. yeah 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 it's a it's very beautiful robin you okay over there looks like you're taking it easy sitting back very good well thank you everyone we didn't I, we didn't end up doing the next one today i thought you know we always i we uh we usually do a full class and we already did a half this week but uh we got to really delve into it which is beautiful yeah. And um, maybe we'll do one of these again next week. Okay. Or, this is great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Bye-bye. Yeah, I think I, I, don't, I don't want to say a set thing, you know, do this every week. I think, you know, sometimes they're, sometimes they're good. Sometimes I'm not a big fan of them. Sometimes it's something I have something else to teach, but we'll, we'll jump back and forth. So okay. we'll see. We'll see. Great. It's okay. a very nice addition. Yes. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Okay. Great. Thank Bye, you very everyone. much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Oh. Have a good week, everyone. Be well. A good week. Bye. Bye. How do I get out?